Hi y'all, I'm Clay, and I'm with the Wildwoods Foundation. Here at Wildwoods, we partnered with the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, bringing you a very special program called the Drop in the Bucket. And for today, we're going to spend a little time learning about the water cycle. But first, let's check in with our correspondent and avid space and time traveler, Misty Waters, to learn a little bit more about water. Hey Clay, I've traveled about 130 million years back in time, and from what I can see, there's quite a few plants and dinosaurs using water during this heat wave. But it looks like it might be the same water that you're all using now. Is that possible? That's right, Misty. It is the same. Every single molecule of hydrogen or oxygen that makes up H2O has been a part of the water cycle within our atmosphere since the Earth began. Wow! Does that mean water never goes away? Yep. In fact, the dinosaurs and plants around you get their water supplied to them the very same way that we do. Clay, it sounds like you're talking about the water cycle. Can you tell us more? Sure thing. Right under our feet, jammed in the tiny spaces between soil, rocks, and sediment, is groundwater, or what we call an aquifer. These aquifers move groundwater to springs, where they well up to the surface of the earth. These small springs eventually become rivers that feed lakes or oceans in what we call surface water. Now, when the sun is out, it gets really hot and heats up the surface water. And when water gets hot enough, it begins to evaporate. Evaporation is the process of changing a liquid into a vapor or a gas. Now, gas is lighter than liquid, so the water vapor rises up, 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 up. Well, not quite that far. The water vapors evaporate into the Earth's atmosphere, getting further and further away from the heat of the Earth's surface. When the water droplets cool down, and start to collect into these great things called clouds. You might see them if you look up in the sky. Plants and trees also release water into the atmosphere. We call that transpiration. It's kind of like sweating for plants. As these clouds move across the sky, they carry tiny water droplets in a process called transportation. We interrupt this regularly scheduled program to bring you the suffix shun. Have a verb and need a noun? Try the suffix shun. Got water vapor you need to evaporate? Try evaporation, the act of evaporating. Do your plants transpire? We can offer transpiration with no money down. And don't forget transportation for clouds that transport water. With shun's help, you can put almost any verb into action. When more and more water droplets get closer together, they bounce off each other and get bigger and bigger. And eventually, they fall back down to the Earth's surface in the form of snow, sleet, hail, and what here in Los Angeles we might be more familiar with, you guessed it, rain. When it precipitates or rains, some of it enters into oceans, and streams, lakes, and other bodies of water. Some of it collects on surfaces like concrete and asphalt then evaporate back up in the atmosphere. And some of that water is able to infiltrate or enter into the ground where it seeps into, you guessed it, groundwater. Yeah. So there you have it, the water cycle in a nutshell. Wow, what an amazing system nature has created. But I have a question. It doesn't rain a lot here in Los Angeles. How are aquifers getting refilled during these hot summer months? Well. Just like the heat of the sun causes evaporation, heat also causes snow high up on the Sierra Nevada mountains to melt, providing fresh water to rivers and reservoirs, filling them up. But let's take a big step back and look at the entire planet. All the water on Earth is all we have. It's called a finite resource, meaning we don't get more. And water is absolutely necessary to every living thing on this planet. 
all plants and animals need it to survive, particularly us humans. Did you know that water makes up more than half of the human body? Both your brain and your heart are 75% water. That's why it's so important to have fresh drinking water. But here's the problem. Even though, like we just said, water never goes away, every day there are more and more people on the planet. And there isn't that much water available for us to drink. See, when you look at Earth, you'd think there's a lot of water on this planet. And you'd be right. 71% of the Earth's surface is covered by water. But there's a catch. 97% of that is in the ocean. Have you ever tried to drink salt water? It doesn't taste very good. Nope. In fact, Misty, if the water that would fill this bucket represented all the water in the world, this cup would represent the amount of fresh water on the planet and most of the water in this cup is actually an ice cube, which represents frozen water in the form of glaciers. So what's left for all us plants and animals on this entire planet is what's in this symbol? That's right, Misty. Plus, here in Los Angeles, we live in a very hot and dry environment, what's known as a Mediterranean ecosystem. Throughout our history, California has faced many dry spells and droughts, which meant it was hot for a very, very long time. And we didn't have enough rain or snowpack to refill reservoirs. And we didn't have enough water saved to meet our needs for the future. And since here in Los Angeles, we have to bring in most of our water from somewhere else, we need to think about that every time we use water. Now, water sustains all life on Earth. So it's an invaluable resource and important that we stay informed and make sure that we have water. Well, forever. Now, you might be thinking, what can you do? Well, to answer that question, check out the Drop in the Bucket's other videos and activities. But wait, there's more. You can also find more ways to save water by visiting the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power's website at ladwp.com. Now, we call our program a Drop in the Bucket after an old saying that refers to a very small part of a much bigger thing. We think it takes each of us doing our part to make sure that everyone will have enough clean water for the future. And as kids, you have an especially big part because, after all, this is your water we're using. So, make sure we take care of it. I'm Clay, and thanks for hanging out with me today. Bye-bye.